Hello and welcome back to the FSS Football Channel and today's match preview for the Manchester United versus Wolverhampton Wanderers match. Now Manchester United coming to this game sat in fourth place, however a win would take a second and two points off title holders and league leaders Liverpool who of course did drop points to West Brom at Anfield last game week. Wolves on the other hand sit in 11th place on 21 points and come to this game off the back of a one all draw on Sunday night against Spurs, meaning they've only had about 48 hours, well, I think it's exactly 48 hours to recover. Wolves, of course, do play that five-back system. It's either a 5-2-3 or a 5-2-1-2. And, of course, they are, are without Raul Jimenez, so the front line will, will consist of either Daniel Podence and Pedro Neto, and most likely either Adama Traore or... Fabio Silva, or at least that's what it's been recently. Both Woody Bolly and Leander Dendonka are also doubts for this game for Wolves, so they may not feature in this game as part of a back three alongside Connor Cody. So that probably will see Max Kilman and Roman Says start at centre back alongside the Scouse captain. Now, like I said earlier, that front line are missing Raul Jimenez, and I think he's their real goal threat. Of course, he is unfortunately injured for Wolves. And without him, I don't think Wolves have much of a goal threat. I think Adama Torre, he hasn't scored for over a year. I don't think Podis and Pedro Neto are brilliant out-and-out strikers. I think they're good wingers, and they score goals you'd expect from wingers. But I don't think they're an out-and-out striker. And I don't think Fabio Silva is really that yet. I don't think he is a starting striker for Wolves. So I don't think Wolves have that real goal threat that Manchester United need to be worried about. And I think we can go and try and attack this game and win this game convincingly against a Wolves side that, like I said, won't be fully fit because they haven't had that long since that Spurs game. They've got injuries. Like I said, two centre-backs might be out for them. Obviously, Raul Jimenez is definitely out for them. So this team is definitely there to get at. One thing that both Podence and Pedro Neto do bring is pace. And because of that, I think we should play either an Axel Twanzebe or Eric Bailly. In a good sense, we, we will have that. Victor Lindelof is injured. Unfortunately, that is the case. He got injured after playing at right back with a back injury against Leicester. Victor Lindelof that week said he's playing through the pain barrier. He's got a back injury. So what does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer do? He decides to not play Axel Twanzebe at right back, but instead play a player that is injured into a Position where he's going to have to get up and down. He's going to have to do a lot of running. And of course he gets injured. It's always going to come. And we don't know how long he's going to be out for. So if Bayer or Axel Twanzeva get injured. Which is very probable. We are we are screwed if this is a long term injury for Lindelof. And we've brought it on ourselves. By continuously playing Lindelof and Maguire. When we don't need to. We simply don't need to. So like I said he will be out. So either Axel Twanzeva or Eric Bayer will start alongside Harry Maguire. Most likely. And while we're speaking about these teams, this is the team I would start if I was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And interestingly enough, you can see Eric Bay and Axel Twanzevi starting for me. I would drop Harry Maguire. Wan Bissaka is back. He well, at least he's been training, so he can start. If Wan is not fully fit, maybe you start Twanzevi at right back and you keep Maguire in. So continuing with my team, obviously I've got David Herring goal. I said about Wan Bissaka if he's fit. Relying on Wan Bissaka being fit, Twanzebi and Bai would be my two centre backs. And at left back, I would go for Alex Tellers, meaning it would be a pretty much a whole new back line from that team that played against Leicester. I just want to play on the front foot, and I think Alex Tellers is a better left back at playing on the front foot because he's better at going forward. However, Luke Shaw is fine there. I'm happy with Luke Shaw. I think he's a very good left back as well. I just want to prefer uh, Alex Tellers' traits going forward while Luke Shaw is a lot better defensively. In midfield, I would go. For Pogba and Fred, I think McTominay should not be in there. He was awful against Leicester. Really was bad. He should have stopped the first goal. I, ju I don't see what he offers to this team. His, defen his attributes defensively is not as good as Fred's. The only thing he's really better at is in the air than Fred. But at the same time, Fred wins more but more tackles on the ground. So when the by the time the ball comes down, he can win it. And then he's got Pogba there. He can win the headers. Fred doesn't need to necessarily always win it in the air. He can just win it back when it's on the ground. And I think what Fred offers this team is so much more than what McTominay offers. So I don't, and Matic offers more than McTominay. I don't think McTominay should be in this team whatsoever. I wouldn't mind selling McTominay. I think it's a real indication of 
McTominay, the fact he doesn't start in midfield for his country, but he's starting week in, week out in his mid in the midfield for Manchester United, seemingly. But yeah, I would have Fred for his dynamism and his tenacity in midfield. And I think he's a good ball winner. He's, he will fit perfectly next to Paul Pogba, who is exactly what we needed against Leicester. A player from deep who can create. Against Leicester, he came on at left wing. Couldn't get in the game. Could not get into the game to save his life. Because we struggled to get it forward. Because we had McTominay and Fred who couldn't, break, who couldn't spit a pass. Paul Pogba can and will do that from deep. We need someone who can create from deep. And I think Paul Pogba will be the man to do that. So I've gone for Paul Pogba alongside Fred. Now, we go to the forward line. I've gone for the attack that got us top four last season, got us third. Marcus Rashford left, Greenwood right, Bruno Fernandes in the middle, and Anthony Martial up top. I think this front line, with a midfield of Matic or Fred and Pogba, can be fantastic. We saw it at the end of last season. What happens when we've got McTominay and Fred, and I described, I said this at the end of our last watch along, Bruno Fernandes has to drop so deep because... We aren't, we aren't creating anything. So he has to be the man to drop deep to create stuff. That pulls Martial out of the number nine role into 10 to, to link up. And then we just doesn't, don't have anyone in the box. Because Martial's having to do the creative job that Bruno would have would be doing at 10 if we had a creative midfielder in the double pivot. And you saw Tillemans. He was getting on the ball loads. And then finding James Madison. And that's what Manchester United missed. We didn't have a Tillemans. We had two NDDs. We needed we needed a team and that could that should have been a Paul Pogba or a Donny van der Beek. But we instead we decided to stick with McTominay and Fred McFred, and instead played Pogba left wing where you got nothing. You got none of the ball. I can't even remember him really doing anything in the game. That's how that's how starved he was off the ball. So put him in midfield. Let him dictate the play. Let him let him run the game like he did against Everton. Let the play, the attacking players play on the front foot. And look, Bruno, yes, yeah, sometimes he will drop deep still. But that just means Pogba can then go. So I think we need a Pogba or a Donny van der Beek playing in that central midfield role alongside either a Fred or a Matic. And then that front line will become better. I think Mason Greenwood, I just I picked him over Cavani. I just don't think Cavani should be starting every game. There's no long-termism in it. And there's news about him potentially get an extension on his contract already. That would be ludicrous and we will, we will live to regret that. If we do it. He's on a three year contract I believe already. By the time we finish that. He will be ready to go. Don't give him a new contract. Because then we're going to be same, in the same situation we are with Matter. Same situation we are with kind of with Demania Matic. Where we've given these old players long term deals. And we can't get rid of them. Phil Jones is fairly the same. We've, why we gave him a new contract we don't know. Because he's never fit. And even when he is fit we don't want to play him. So don't give Kamani a new contract. Don't extend it. At the moment there's no point. When we've got him for another three years still. He's been here for six months. He will become a liability if we give him too long of a contract. So don't give him a new contract. and Or don't extend it. Leave it for now. And we'll see where we get. Let him be the Hernandez. Let him be the only good soldier. Let him be the super sub. That comes on and changes the game when we need him to be. And let him start against the Watfords. Maybe he even start him against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup. I would leave him as an impact player on in the Premier League games. And I think this this team allows Manchester United to play in the front foot. And I think that's the type of thing we want to see. We want to see our fullbacks getting nice high and wide. And I think Axel Swanzebe and Eric Bailly allows our fullbacks to get forward. Because they're so quick, they can cover. And wan and Tellers will get back because they are quick. And that's how top teams play. They play with their fullbacks getting forward. They don't have their, their fullbacks and their deep defensive midfielders always covering their centre-backs. I think that we always do that with Lindelof and Maguire. We don't need to if we have two quick centre-backs in Swanzebe and Bailly. Anyway, that's the team I would play. I think Onigan Solskjaer personally will play this team. I think that he'll go with David Herring goal, obviously. Juan Masaka, again, if he's fit, he'll play. Obviously, he'll keep Maguire in there. He, I think he'll go by and Maguire. Maguire's his captain. He'll never drop him. He shouldn't be captain. He should have been dropped for captain after Sevilla. He wasn't. Then he should have been dropped um, from captain after the whole Greece incident. Wasn't. And he plays every minute. He played every minute of last season for us. Played every minute of this year, apart from against PSG because he was injured. He's played the most minutes out of any footballer in 2020. Stop playing him all the time. He needs a rest. And, I mean, he deserves to be dropped on current form. Well, I think Odegaard Sasha will pick Shaw. He just likes Shaw. He likes a defensive fullback. That's why he likes Van Bissaka so much. And I, I, I like Van Bissaka. I don't think Luke Shaw should be our left back long term. I think Tellez is a lot more of a modern fullback, especially if we have got Van Bissaka playing on the right. We don't need two defensive fullbacks. So, Van Bissaka for me on the right. I would go with Tellez on the left, but I think. 
Ollie will go with Shaw. And I think Ollie will stick with McTominay. McTominay is Ollie's love child. No matter what, McTominay will play. And then forward line, I think Ollie will put Marcel on left, Marcus Rashford out right, Bruno down the centre, and Cavani up top. Like I said, Ollie was singing Cavani's praises in the press conference and speaking about his ex contract extension. Um, and how it could happen. Look, I, I, like I said earlier, I, you know my thoughts about that. I don't think Oli Gosolsha should be starting Cavani every game. He, he's not a player that can start every game. Look, Cavani's a good player, but I think he'd be better as an impact player off the bench. So I wouldn't start him, but I think Oli Gosolsha will. Anyway, my overall thoughts about this game. I think we should go to win it. And there's no reason why we cannot win this game. We are the better team out of the two teams. We, come, we can move into second. And look, we should be looking to say that Leicester dropped points today against Crystal Palace. We can, we can move up to second and still have a game hand over them that's massive and all we have to do win this game Wolves are there for the taking they've got they've got injury problems and we can beat them while we can move two points off Liverpool and let, let's keep keep this title race alive but do I have confidence in us doing it I'm more nervy than I should be and why is that because this group of players are bottlers we've seen it time and time again this group of players are bottlers three semi-finals last season lost them all we lost Carabao Cup 3-1 in the first leg. Yes, we won 1-0 on the second leg, but we went out. No point in us winning that. We was already out after our shambolic first first performance. It might have been 4-1, and then we won 2-0. Doesn't really matter. Then, FA Cup. Barrison 3-1 defeat. Sevilla, 2-1 defeat. Embarrassing. We're bottlers. And then even if you look at the Premier League. We did fantastic straight after lockdown. We were smashing teams for fun. Bournemouth, we put four or five past them probably. Villa, we beat 3-0. Came against Palace. We struggled. I mean, McTominay played awful. We struggled in that game, but we just about won it. Martial and Rashford pulled us through. Like they had so often that season before Bruno signed. Then we came against Southampton. We were winning. Shaw got injured. We can see the last minute. Bottled it. Bottled it last minute. West Ham, awful. We get Against West Ham, we were awful. Mason Greenwood pulled us out of a hole in that game. We didn't deserve a point. Pogba obviously gave away a penalty for a handball. We were lucky to get a point in that game. Then Leicester. Leicester dominated us that day. I remember we were dominated. Martial went through and goal. Got fouled. We won a penalty. Bruno, of course, slotted away. And Lingard tackled last minute. Catch Michael to make it 2-0. Made it more convincing than it was. We didn't deserve to win that game, really. We did. And, of course, we were excited and we were buzzing for it. But it was hard. it's hard to say we deserved it. And, look. Until this group of these group of players prove they're not, I'm going to keep saying they're bottlers. Because whenever we've had something to play for, like I said, them three semi-finals, when top four was looking like it should be ours, and that was around the Southampton game, that's when we that's when we lost and we went off the ball. We drew two games against Southampton and West Ham, games we really should have won, especially that Southampton game. We were one 0 up, no two one up, sorry, in the 90th minute. But am I, what am I saying about this game? Of course, you watched my Premier League preview, you know what I've. Well, I think about this game. I think we are going to win this game. And I think we're going to win it 2-1. Anyway, please do get in your comments down below what you think of this match preview and what your score prediction is. Please do tune in for the watch along. Starts at half seven, kickoff at eight. And yeah, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time. Peace.